Hi, I'm Leanne Adams, Certified Master Baker, and I'd like to talk to you about a component of the test, Baker's Percentage. So there is a math component, and one of the things in the math test is, is Baker's percentage. So let me just define what that is first. It's a set of math equations that puts every ingredient in the formula in ratio or percentage to the flour weight. Anytime you have the flour, it's always 100%. So for example, if we had 10 pounds of flour in the recipe and five pounds of water, that would be five divided by 10 or 50% water. If you have more than one type of flour in your recipe, say you had bread flour and whole wheat flour, then you would add those together and get what's called the total flour weight. And that's 100%. So you may be listening to this and go, what, why? Why are we doing this? There's a couple of reasons why. It puts every ingredient into a standardized percentage, no matter whether it's a tiny recipe or a huge recipe. Once they're in percentages, they're, they're uniform, and you can evaluate that formula no matter whether it's big or small. And there are some standard um, percentages within baking. If we take uh, bread, for example, the baguette we made, flour is always 100%, it's pretty standard to have your water at 68%, salt is at 2%, and fresh yeast is at 2%. We know that. So once you, you know these things, it doesn't matter, again, whether it's a big recipe or a small recipe, you can start talking um, and understanding from a set point. Um, it standardizes your recipes. The other thing is, as bakers, we're very familiar with the idea that you shouldn't be multiplying recipes more than twice. Things get out of kilter. You, you never want to come in and multiply a recipe by 522. It's not going to work. But if you put your recipe into baker's percentage and then multiply it by 552, everything stays in ratio because that's how this is built. It's in ratio to the flour. So you get a much more stable formula when you multiply it within baker's percentages and, and you can have much better success that way. Um, so that's why we do it. The basic math, as I said, is you get your total flour weight and every ingredient is divided by the total flour weight and then expressed as a percentage. And if you're in a baker's percent and you wanna come out, everything's already in percentages, you need to know your to total flour weight and then you multiply that by all your percentages and you're suddenly back in pounds or ounces or grams. Talking about pounds, ounces, or grams, you can't do this in cups or teaspoons. It has to be in weight and it has to be the same weight. This is where English um, units of weight get a little weird. You can't use pounds and ounces. You have to pick pounds, but you have to pick ounces. Metric works beautifully in Baker's percentage. Um, once you start doing it, you'll realize everything's based off of a thousand. It works really easily with percentages. We've, we've put a recipe in Baker's Percentage. We've talked about taking one out. The other thing is doing a yield change. So if we want to take it up or down, there's, rather than multiplying by 562, that's still a little scary. You can do something called a yield change. So everything's in percentages. You're going to add all those percentages up and we get what's called a total baker's percentage. So our baguette recipe would be 172% when you add 100%, 68%, 2%, 2%. Then you take that total baker's percent and you multiply it by your new yield. We'll give you your new total flour weight. Once you have your total flour weight, all you have to do is multiply it by your baker's percentages and you have a new recipe. You've changed the yield. It was all done within the percentages and the ratios, and it will work. Questions that come up um, are everything that says flour in the name isn't a flour. 
So we get a lot of questions like, is oat flour flour? Is almond flour flour? The answer to almond flour is no. Oat flour is yes. Um, if it absorbs water like a flour, then you add it to your, the rest of your flours to your total flour weight. Almond flour doesn't absorb any water. It's just a really finely ground nut. So that guy's a no. Um, and, and that's probably the easiest way to decide whether or not you add something called a flour into the total flour weight. And that's it. It's, it sounds kind of scary when you get started. It's like baker's percentage. This is, this is scary stuff. It's not. Um, it's pretty easy and it's very useful in production settings. So go enjoy your math.